target and you know you launch a missile to kill him. And you base it on his personality, you know, which is why you call his signature, the demographics that meet up and then you strike at him. Uh, under Obama, the standard for what is considered a valuable target to strike has been lowered, uh, lowered very considerably. And now some people say it is, well actually not some people say, there's some journalists from the New York Times who reported that the standard is so low that is every military age male in the vicinity of the strike is open uh, to be targeted, which basically means I think every male in this room, if someone from the Taliban was just sitting here or they thought and the drone was flying over, they would wipe us all out because we would fall under signature strikes, uh, even though all of us are missing. Um, the Obama administration, administration has never explained the rationale for signature strikes. Um, they have never really commented publicly on drone strikes to begin with, so we can only guess to what their rationale is behind lowering their standards. Um, these signature strikes also coincided with the CIA's policy of double tap, where they try to hit locations twice in a row. I don't know if you guys like to shoot guns, I like to shoot guns, but they show, they kind of teach you, you know, when you shoot a gun, make sure you, you know, pull the trigger twice, you know, so you can get it confirmation of the kill. It's just on target range. Um, but they call it double tap in Pakistan, and I'm sure they do the same thing in Yemen, but they strike the same location twice. This is very nefarious because you and experts have just been investigating this double strike uh, sort of tactic that they use. And they say that the CIA is deliberately targeting rescue personnel who come to the damaged buildings. They say this is a possible war crime that the CIA is committing. Uh, the double tap is notorious in Pakistan for killing people who come to rescue the wounded. So people now stay away from buildings or places that are struck. Uh, they said don't come anymore because they're going to kill the people who come rescue. So now people who are wounded being menaced and people can't get you know, appropriate care in a good amount of time. CNN, BBC, um, The Guardian have also reported that instances that mosques were targeted specifically on Fridays for funeral purposes. Um, you know, people go some countries and pray, pray uh, the Janazah prayer, which is the funeral of the dead. On um, Fridays, usually they try to make it, but they target these mosques, especially many organizations that reported on this. This is not a possible war crime. Um, this contradicts President Obama's take on the situation on targeting civilians. He says, quote, drones have not caused a huge number of civilian casualties. He told the questioner, this is a targeted, focused effort on people who are on a list of active terrorists trying to go in and harm Americans. Uh, no doubt they are trying to attack the senior Taliban and al-Qaeda members. That's who they go after, they're not psychopaths. But they do show a great disregard for human life. Basically a good analogy of this is if terrorists hijack an airline and are flying it around. This present administration on that logic would say, let's just shoot down another airline. So we'll get the, tar we'll get the terrorists on board, forget the civilians. And we know that would never happen if you know Delta was hijacked over New York. They would send in a SWAT team to do negotiations, but apparently Civilians in Pakistan are not given the same amount of due process, the same amount of you know, sanctity to their life, so to speak, uh, fortunately. As of now, things are starting to change out with the administration has started to roll back these strikes ever since 2009. Um, they have proven effective in taking out the Taliban and the senior Al-Qaeda leaders, uh, but they've caused way too many civilian casualties. They've caused they have too much evidence looking back to them. There's under a lot of criticism. The administration's under a lot of criticism some constraints, to put some legal uh, boundaries to you know, have some debate and discussion before we go to start these basically assassination programs throughout the world. Um, there were no reported drone strikes actually this past January, last month, in Pakistan because that coincided, I think, the American government was giving the, um, the Pakistani government so they were time to negotiate with the Taliban. A lot of people also don't know that there's a kind of civil war, quasi-civil war going on in Pakistan due to the American occupation of Afghanistan. And so the own Taliban have been very, very, uh, very, very vicious in Pakistan. They've been on, uh, peace talks have not been going well this past month. And they say, you know, we need to make these drone strikes stop before we even talk of peace. So they stop, but there's no, you know, there's no forward movement on these talks. So a lot of um, violence has erupted in Pakistan these past couple months, suicide attacks everywhere. Uh, the Pakistani military has also killed about 100 suspected Taliban militants, you know, last month too, so it's going back and forth. You know, I'm pretty sure the Obama administration will probably start their drone strikes again in Pakistan. Um, you know, these individual countries are a good case, you know, case studies, but we have more of a frightening implication because eventually these drones are going to move on from Pakistan. They've already have most of them there in 
Somalia now, but we target Eastern Africa. And the, the, the theater of engagement reason is it because we are in a war of terror. We're not in a war against a certain objective, a certain country, uh, certain physical stuff. We're against, we're at war with an idea and an emotion. You know, terror is an emotion. So there's no end to it. You know, how do you stop being afraid? That's essentially what they're for. Um, this goes well with the drone strike policy. It can then become an existential problem. You know, instead of sending soldiers to occupy countries, you can just turn on BBC or the news and just listen, hey, there's a drone strike in Indonesia, somewhere in Africa, somewhere in Latin America, you know, 11 people dead, whatever. That's pretty much how they want to perpetuate this war. Um, basically, to, I want to end on this quick note. I don't know if they have time, but um, uh, there's a quick story of, uh, I want to share with you guys. It's very touching. And it does have a point, like I said. Uh, his name is, the story's about this young man. He's about 15 years old. His name's Atiyaz Hussein. Some of you guys may have heard him. Um, and I believe he's a great illustration of the impact of the war on terror and the drone war. Um, basically, Atiyaz, he was, he was from uh, one of those, he's from the tribal areas where the drone strikes were going on. He was going to school. And during that time, he, uh, he was just late to school, he was skipping just like a lot of kids do. So he was going to school late, he saw this man he didn't know approaching the school, and he tried to stop him, he wouldn't stop. The man started to look suspicious and started to run. And there, Adiaz noticed that, you know, he was with a bunch of friends skipping. Adiaz said, his, his friend said, Adiaz noticed that he had, you know, a suicide vest on with lots of bombs, they know how this looks like. So he was running towards the assembly in the morning, you know, where all 2,000 kids were standing outside. Atiyaz goes and tackles him right before the school gates, and coincidentally, the suicide bomber deploys his suicide vest, kills Atiyaz. But Atiyaz saved his entire school. There were about 2,000 kids out there. His, um, his death you know, was reported a lot. Pakistan was not picked up here in a lot of America, unfortunately. Um, his dad is quoted to have said he made his mother very sad today, but he saved thousands of other mothers from being sad. Lala Yusufzai, girl who got shot by the Taliban who well known across the world. She said she called him a very brave and compassionate person. Um, the only reason I'm mentioning this story is because I want to illustrate two symbols, Atiyaz and Malala in Pakistan, because we don't usually bear the brunt of this war on terror of drone strikes. Um, it is civilians in these countries in Pakistan and Yemen and other places that are on the forefront of the war of terror. And you know, there's a lot of retribution there's this, in Pakistan and Afghanistan, there's this word called Badal, which means revenge. And revenge is very important. You know, if someone harms you, you must take Badal, you must take revenge on them. And it, there were a lot of people in those areas who had no qualms with America. But after these drone strikes, which have killed so many civilians, and have affected perhaps thousands and thousands of people in extended networks, there are a lot of people sitting there saying, we need our Badal, we need our revenge against America. And a lot of it's not a, not a big, uh, not a big gap of reasoning to assume that someone who puts on a suicide vest is motivated because the Taliban and Al Qaeda take advantage of the uh, war on terror of these drone strikes, and take advantage of people's anger feelings and people's revenge, and manipulate them and they set them off. So this guy was going to blow up the school. He might have been one of those people affected by the drone strikes. You never know, it's over that region. Um, this is just a symptom of the war on terror. So I just want to remind everyone that we cannot kind of push these concerns aside. You know, we have to do it. Even if there are people not allowed to show us that America can be struck by people uh, who have issues with them, you know, who have problems with them, whether you agree with them or not, their method of voicing their dissent, America can be struck in a long incident. There are plenty of plenty of people in Pakistan, I can say for sure, certain right now, who are sitting there looking very angrily at America, knowing they have this idea of revenge, because they have seen their brother or sister get killed for no reason. That's all I got to say.